Pretty much the championship game between the two winners from last year. Opening tip on the way, and it looks like Minnesota's going to get it here to the team. And finally, takes a little bit with a couple players there a little bit uh, non aggressive to the basketball. And he finally bounced to Minnesota and went through to the opening possession of the afternoon. Tanner Early against Easton Nielsen. He's near the top of the team. Now that Austin Malloy makes a move right through the lane and a nice little finger roll. So off the hop, the Buccaneers will take the lead. Two to nothing for MHS. Austin Malloy does a nice job getting into the lane right there and penetrated through the Cortez defense. Now the Bucks are going to steal it away. Here's Austin Malloy on a little fake pass as he came down into traffic. He was not able to get the lane, but Monticello gets a follow up basket from Sheldon Glass as the Buccaneers take a four to nothing lead in the early stages. So Monticello. Showing that strong defense that they showed last night. That's definitely one of the factors. I don't think that Bayfield is one of the toughest teams the Bucks will face all year. But here's another steal. And Austin Malloy this time is going to draw a foul. Not able to score the basket. And he does get a foul and he will shoot two here. So MHS a chance to open up a 6 to nothing lead to start it off. This will be the first foul of the afternoon on Randy Haley at Cortez. And the Buckaroos again going to shoot two at the hands of Austin Malloy. So a strong start so far for MHS like what we saw last night. This is a team that you, know, you heard Coach Esco mentioning yesterday has to basically focus on more speed maybe than they have in the past as they don't have the big strong bodies that they have had in the past down underneath the basket. And so far we have seen indications of what looks to be a fast team this season. And of course the defense is strong as well. They forced a lot of turnovers last night. And already have forced two here today on both of Cortez's first possessions. And Austin Malloy made one of the two free throws. And now a three-point basket to answer back for Cortez as Bracken Langston hits the tray. Monticello on the way back into their offensive end. Lose the basketball out of bounds, so Monticello commits their first turnover of the game. And that's a tough one as Cortez now a chance to tie or take the lead on this possession. 6.35 to go in the first quarter play, just underway here in this championship game of the four corners classic at Cortez. Monticello Mon Cortez with the basketball in the offensive end. They miss a couple of scoring tries, and the Bucks come away with a defensive rebound. Now, a fast break down the court. Again, there's that speed. They mishandled a pass, though, underneath the basket. And that'll be a turnover coming back the other way for Cortez, but on the way back across the timeline, Sheldon Black will commit a foul, reaching in there, trying to steal the basketball. So Monticello commits their first foul of the afternoon, and Cortez will inbound from over on the far sideline, right at the midcourt strike. And it'll be number 33, Bracken Whitesnake, carrying the basketball here right to the top of the key, working on Austin Malloy, who went up and tried to block the shot, but Whitesnake with another three-point basket, and I guess they'll have to focus on him, as apparently he's got some skill shooting from outside, and Cortez takes their first lead of the ball game, six to five. Now the Bucks with it back in the offensive end, a big little shot, no good from Sheldon Black, and the rebound to Cortez. Now they've got a guy wide open underneath the basket. It's going to be a bucket and a foul. As Randy Haley will have a chance to complete a three-point play. And it's going to be the first foul of the afternoon on Easton Nielsen. So a tough break for MHS, who now find themselves down by three. And in the meantime, Randy Haley to the line to try to complete a three-point play. The shot on the way, and it rolls off. Austin Malloy with a nice rebound there for the Buccaneers. So the game's eight to five, MHS with the basketball in the offensive end. Malloy looks to Sheldon Blackwood on the right side. Now we're gonna get a whistle here. It looks like an offensive foul off the ball for Monticello here on Tanner Irby. Irby will be called for a foul, and that'll turn the ball back over to Cortez. So the Buccaneers opened up a four to nothing lead. And actually it was a five to nothing lead and since have been outscored eight to five. So the Panthers right now with all the momentum, they've got the ball in the offensive end. Here is Jaron Carter with it working over to his left and we get a whistle on the play. And it looks like this will be a Monticello foul again off the ball here. Austin Malloy being whistled for his first of the afternoon. So four players now with fouls. One each for Monticello, Austin Malloy, Sheldon Black, and Tanner Irving, and Easton Nielsen all have one foul 
four in the early stages. Just one foul as a team for Cortez on the other side of the score. Panthers have the basketball in the offensive end. Now they'll be called for a travel. Andy Haley walks with the ball. And so that's a break for Monticello as they'll get it back here with 5.14 remaining in the first quarter. Here comes MHS across the timeline. Dylan Mon has the ball. Hands over on the left side to Tanner Early. He will look right side now to Easton Nielsen. Nielsen out high near the top of the key. Hands off left side to Sheldon Black. Down low they come. A nice little touch pass from Dylan Mon to Tanner Early. But he missed everything with a three-point try. Back the other way. They have to save it from flying out of bounds, though. As that was a long run of pass there. And is going out of bounds before the save. The Monticello gets the basketball, comes back down the court. Austin Malloy, a nice play to go to the bucket and score. And the Bucks pull back to win one point. So Austin Malloy, the leading scorer right now for MHS with five points. And here comes a long shot from Cortez. No good. That was number 23, Connor McGee taking that shot. And here's Austin Malloy now with the basketball. Hands over on the left side to Tanner Early. A three-point try bounces off the left side, right side of the rim twice, and then out. And a defensive board for Cortez. And they're back in their offensive end loop. And now it'll be the Panthers trying to set one up here. It's going to be slowed down by Bracken Whitesnook, and he'll take another three-point shot, and he hits. He's taken three of those. And he's hit all three of them. Some big three-point baskets for White Skunk. He leads all scores with nine points. And it is an 11-7 lead for the Cortez Panthers here in the first quarter. 345 remaining. Tanner Early trying to answer right down to the three and he hits. And they're trading three-pointers here. I was talking to the coaches before the game, and they're kind of jokingly, but maybe seriously, saying that Monticello will basically have to average what they did last night, seven three-pointers a game, they think, this year. Uh, of course, not without that real strong presence underneath the basket this season that they've had, and people like Jake Duncan in the past, Monticello's going to, again, have to focus on a speed and a shooting lane here this season, so a little bit different method. I heard Coach, Ch uh, Coach Esplin talking about that last night in the interview as uh, Black and White Stank is going to be part for his first foul in the ball game. Monticello will get it back here. And that was an offensive foul. The Buccaneers a break here. Actually, it was on the rebound. And they were fighting for a loose ball. So the NHS sets one up in the offensive end. Going on to Austin Malloy. He's just to the left of the top of the key. Now to Tanner Ruby over on the right side. To Sheldon Black and just behind the free throw line. He makes a play up jumper. He's got four points on the night. The Bucks retake the lead, 12 to 11 here. As it looks like we're in store for what we expected—a tight back and forth game here between these two rivals from a few miles away from each other, but of course in two different states. And these games have always typically been good between these two teams, and we're seeing nothing less right now here in the early stages. Austin Malloy is going to draw a foul here. The Buccaneers have worked the ball inside the Cortez defense, and this is going to be. A foul on Jonathan Walt. That'll be his first of the ball game. And it looks like we're going to have scoreboard issues possibly. Now we're going to get a technical foul, I think, here also. Well, time out. I'm not sure exactly what's happening here. The referees are going to stand here at midcourt and discuss what's happening here. So I'm not sure what has been called on the play. Right now they've got a foul up to number 55. That would be Briston Walker. Yeah, it is going to be a technical foul. Apparently on Briston Walker as well. So the Bucks are going to get a couple free free throws here. As Easton Nielsen stands alone at the free throw line. So five fouls. Uh, well, excuse me, four fouls on both teams now. Well, an interesting development there. I didn't see what Walker did, but apparently it warranted a technical foul. So, Easton Wilson takes advantage and it's the first of his two years. So, and they'll have one more, and then I believe uh, the Buckaroos will have the basketball out of bounds. As unfortunately, Nielsen not able to make but one of those two. So now I think it's Buckaroo basketball to inbound from midcourt. That is, in fact, the case. It'll be Austin Malloy walking over there to get the basketball from the referee. NHS now has it back in the offensive end. Great kick pass. 
down low from Everett Hatch to Austin Malloy, and he was right under the basket, but he got that great pass from Hatch and laid it in easily. Nice play by Hatch to see. Good look down there to Austin Malloy. A nice quick touch pass and was in the air. Didn't even come down and got it over to Malloy. The Buck is now with a four-point lead again. 15 to 11 years. About 210 to go in this first quarter play. It is basically, it is technically the championship game here at the Jack Fairs Classic for 2013 here in Cortez. This is a battle between the two winners from last night's games. And right now, MHS with a slim lead, but both of these teams, I think, the rest of this game is going to follow back and forth. And here's another nice pass underneath the bucket. Austin Malloy, he's again able to lay one in off the glass. Montessaro takes their biggest lead of the game, 17 to 11, six points. And a timeout is called by Cortez, coach Dusty DeBoer. By the way, Monticello is coached by Tony Espel, assisted by Josh Kyes and Brian Boyd. And Cortez is coached by Dusty DeBoer, assisted by Dan Wood and Joe Kelly. And Cortez is going to call a timeout right here with 1.49 to go in the first quarter. Monticello on top by six. 17 to 11. Our broadcast today being brought to you in part by San Juan Health Services, providing emergency and continued care to San Juan County for almost 55 years at the San Juan Hospital and Clinic and Blanding Spanish Valley and Dove Creek Clinics. The San Juan Hospital is a top 100 critical access hospital and the only stroke designated facility in Southeast Utah. Also today, Countywide Realty, five local agents, they've been meeting all of real estate needs for almost 20 years. Blue Mountain Foods, Minnesota's hometown grocery, featuring fresh produce, meats, deli, and bakery items daily with specials every week. The San Juan Pharmacy, meeting all of Monticello and Blanding's pharmaceutical and gift needs. Sunstone Tires, meeting all of Monticello's tire needs. A block east of the stoplight on Center Street, they also perform alignments, oil changes, and they're an official U-Haul dealer. You can reach the shop at 459 0038 we're back to action here. Cortez with the basketball. And they will actually throw it away here as they try to pass it over here near side. And that'll be turned over to Monticello. So the Buckaroos get the break here. And MHS will have the basketball plus the six point lead. A minute 35 to go now in the opening quarter. The Bucks lead 17 to 11. They have it in the offensive end. Here's Sheldon Black, top of the key, Everett Hatch. Back into Black as they work a nice little hit and go. It's a good shooting here as Black hits another jumper from right at the free throw line. Seems like that's pretty much his favorite spot. They're able to get him open there. And Monticello, again, has moved the ball very well. Both of these two games so far to start off. And they are really finding opening players. They're moving very well and uh, staying open. And the Buckaroos here are going to be actually called for a foul. Looks like Austin Malloy is going to be whistled for a block on the play. That's his second foul of the night, or the afternoon, I should say. And Cortez will get set to inbound the basketball here. It's going to be back in the white space, standing on the near side, right in front of the Buckley Players match. And the white spot will send it all the way across court in for number 44, Austin Bales. Bales at the top of the key with the basketball. And hand it off to number 55, now down underneath the basket they go. And a shot coming from White Stump from the left corner that would have been for three no good. And Monticello is able to get the basketball and now a great play by Dylan Mullins. And save that from going out of bounds and actually throw it off of Jonathan Walk's side. And it ended up going out off of Cortez. It was going to be off of Monticello. But the Buccaneers will get possession here as now that Unfortunately, uh, this pass is going to be deflected and then off the hands of the third and out of bounds. So unfortunately, the Buckaroos lose possession as Cortez will get it right back. And it remains 19 to 11. We're now down into the final 40 seconds of this first quarter of play. And we're going to get another foul. These referees have uh, definitely been pretty aggressive on the foul calls. Apparently, this is going to be on... Cortez. I'm not sure what's happening here. Will this be on Cortez? He, I thought, indicated that it was going to be against White Skunk, number 33. No, apparently it was on Monticello as number 33. Okay, we, do have, uh, we do have Jens Brewer in the ball game right now, so he will be called for a foul. And it will be Cortez basketball. We'll loop it in over the top and a nice little play to the tall, Mr. Walker. 
after the DJ Lele rolling off the glass. That pulls Cortez back to the next six points. 19 to 13, half a minute to go in the first quarter of play. Yes, here's Everett Hatch. He's going to be just good. He's going to come down underneath. And the shot is blocked down there. Shelton Brock found himself under the basket. Adding against Tar Clippers for Cortez. He doesn't have a stick. He's just got the catch. The Panthers come quickly back down to the floor. Wilson goes to the bucket, gets a pass, and lays one in. The Panthers back to within four. Here's Shelton Brock there. To Everett Hatch, left side for three. No good. And as the shot was sailing into the air, a foul is called, and apparently an offensive foul against Monticello. And this will again be on Jens Brewer, his second of the night. Second of the afternoon, tough to get used to an afternoon ball game. This coming with just five seconds to go in the first quarter, so this will be the last possession right here. Cortez into the offensive end. Um, black and white skunk, and it's a real break for Monticello, but that one did not go in. That would have us back to winning one point. And instead, it hits off the front of the rim more good, so the Buccaroos finish the first quarter with a 19-15 lead. And we'll head into the second quarter. The Buccaroos with a four-point lead. The broadcast today, and Brian in the second period as the Panthers inbound the basketball to start things off. It'll be black and white skunk with the basketball. Up high near the midfoot line. Up left side. They'll bounce it into the middle. It's going to be stolen by Tanner Early. He spots him out. Eight for Roy. Getting to the basket. He missed the lay-in, though. So Monticello should have had a decent two for a four. Unfortunately, he'll get the basketball back up. And now Cortez a chance to pull it within one here. Over to the basket. He's able to get that one in off the glass and make it 19 to 17. Now. 7.25 to go in the first half of play. This has been a back and forth contest, although Monticello has had the lead, I think, for more than half the time at this point. Cortez led for a couple minutes in the first quarter, but otherwise it has been Monticello in the lead, but the largest lead, I believe, has only been six points or so. Now the Bucks throw it all away, but they steal it right back. There's a real break, but Easton Nielsen misses a lane in the So he just almost lost it, but got it back, and then they missed the shot. So Cortez gets the defensive board. They got it back on our offensive end as we speak. Black and White Skunk working on Shelby Black's defense. Spins away from Black into the line. As Monticello now gets it quickly back in the offensive end, so they are knotted at 19 here. Not a surprise, these two teams battling it out. There's a two point try from Tanner Early that goes off. And now Cortez has a chance to retake the lead as they get it back in the offensive end. But Wexler mishandles, trying to dribble it away from the Buckaroo defense. It was stolen by Tanner Early. Cortez stole it back, but Easton Nixon then steals it back, and he goes down court to score. As they kind of bounced it around between the two teams at midcourt. Monticello finally came out of the melee, and it was Easton Wilson all by himself down to the bucket in an easy lane for MHS. So they retake the lead, and now it looks like we're going to get a foul on Sheldon Black here on the floor. Black team. And I believe this will be a one and one here, and he the second foul on the afternoon on Black. And Black and White Stump is going to go to the line for the contest. He's already got 11 points, leading all scorers here today. And we'll try to increase that right now. He's at the line. And White Stump misses on the front end, and then we're going to get a jump ball on the rebound. So Black and White Stump not able to. Hit the free throw there, they're going to give them another chance, and Monticello's going to actually end up with the basketball here on alternating possession. So a break for MHS as that basically ends up resulting in a turnover on Cortez, and the Bucks now have it back in the offensive end. So here's Tanner Early, top of the key. They try to work it down inside of Tanner Early, and he'll be fouled as they really passed it down into traffic there. It looks like the Cortez defense has become much more aggressive here as this game has developed a little bit here in the first quarter. The first half of the It's the second foul of the day on Jonathan Walk. And Monticello will get the basketball out of bounds here in the offensive end. Matt Freestone takes an inbound pass from Austin Malloy. Now they will give and go back to the ball. And he hits a two-point shot. They say his toe is on the line. It was almost
Falls long enough for three. Apparently his toe touched the line. And they give him two on the play, making a 23 to 19 lead. And I think they indicated uh, one extra point up on the board for Myosolo. So they've got the score up to 24 19 right now. But I think that was just a two pointer. That's what I saw indicated from the referee. And on the ensuing play, coming back down here, looks like a foul against Monticello apparently, and apparently on Dylan Mullen. So another one and one coming here for Cortez. Meanwhile, it is 23 to 19. The scoreboard indicates 24 to 19, but I'm pretty certain that was just a two-point basket that they gave Austin Malloy most recently here on the one and one. It's going to be missed by Briston Walker on the front end. So we should get another defensive board to throw the ball away, coming back down the court. And Cortez is going to get it right back. So Cortez foul shooting not too good so far here today, which is a break for Monticello because uh, they will be shooting from here on out. Monticello already has nine fouls as a team here in this first half. They still have 5 0 9 remaining in the first half as the Buccaneers will actually get the ball back here. Cortez will out of bounds on the baseline, trying to drive through traffic. And now the Bucs will work it across the timeline into the offensive end. It's Dylan Mond handing off to Tanner Erdley. He'll hand to Matt Freestone, who tries a no-look behind the back pass through the defense that doesn't work out. That was actually kicked. No whistle on the play, and Cortez steals it and comes away into the offensive end. But it'll be number 23, Wilson called for a travel as they get it down in the offensive end. So again, I guess uh, neither team really played a perfect game at this point, not to be expected in the first couple games of the season. And, uh, both teams kind of struggling turnover-wise right now. The ball basically has been going back and forth all game long. MHS most recently right now with it in the offensive end. Here is Matt Freestone handing off to him. Now they eventually get it to Austin Malloy and then back to Dylan Mon over on the right side. He'll work his way through the D. He's going to draw a foul. It looks like oh, he's in the motion of the shot, I believe. I think, no, they're going to call a travel, apparently, or no, a carry. As Dylan Mon had kind of reached over the top of everybody with that basketball, so they call a carry on the play. And it'll go to Cortez on a turnover. 23 to 19 is the score that I have. We've got 24 to 19 on the board. I'm thinking that Austin Malloy hit a three pointer most recently. But Cortez comes right back and scores Briston Walker. The Buckaroos coming back down to try to score, and Austin Malloy, I believe, is fouled here on the play. Right now, 23 to 21 in favor of Monticello. We are, we are going to get a foul here on number 42 of Cortez, Jason Carver. So Austin Malloy will go to the line. And I believe this is a two-shot situation. He was in the act of shooting when he was fouled, and Austin Malloy makes the first of the two shots. So one more coming, 24 to 21 now. As Malloy will put up another shot, and it is good. Austin Malloy. Getting both of those free throws right there. He leads all scorers with 13 points so far this afternoon in the Bucks League, 25-21. Here is Jace Jaron Carter, I should say, with the basketball for Cortez and had a Briston Walker. Tom Brown will under the basket and keeps a little spin move from Taylor Wilson here. As he works on the buck a little defense and gets one to go. And the lead back to two points for Monticello, 25-23. Here's Austin Malloy handing off to Easton Nielsen, now Tanner Irving on the right side. He rolls to the top of the key, hands one to Matt Freestone, who misses a jumper from just inside the arc, and the rebound to Cortez. 320 remaining in the first half of play, and they're going to get an offensive foul here for the charge called on Black and White Snake, and he may have said something to the left of the right there. These guys have got to watch out. There's already been one technical called in this ballgame against Cortez. Right now, we're going to get Monticello getting the basketball back after the offensive foul on Bracken White's go. So 25-23, MHS with the lead into the middle. They go, Austin Malloy is out of and hits an easy from the free throw line. 27-23 now for the Buccaneers. As MHS takes the four-point lead back. Just over three minutes to go in the first half of the play. Action has been fast and furious here today. There's another nice drive to the bucket by Taylor Wilson, but this time the over-under doesn't work. He just has too much ground to cover, and the 
Uh, shot goes off the side of the rim. Monticello with a strong defensive board. And the Bucks have it back in the offensive end. 2.40 now to go in the first half of play. Now a long shot Monticello has now scored a couple of three point baskets. It's 30 to 23. Cortez with it back in the offensive end. They run a little bit over on the far side. It doesn't work out. It's back to White State. This is the three. And Monticello back with the defensive board. And here comes Austin Malloy. Almost uh, was eluded by a pass. They get it to Easton Wilson. His shot from three point range is blocked. Monticello throws it away now. Here's an interception and Raven hit it himself. Cortez back to the Austin Malloy with the basketball in between the midcourt line and the three-point arc over to the left of the key. Now to Dylan Mons, basically in between the top of the key and midcourt. Now to Easton Nielsen on the left side. 100 seconds to go in this first half of play. MHS has moved the ball pretty well in these first two games of the season so far. They've been pretty speedy. They've had some pretty strong defense. Now just kind of working the ball around the perimeter. Maybe just trying to use some clock. No, they'll take a shot. Yeah. He's got five points on the afternoon. And the Bucks lead 32 25. With 115 to go in the first half of play. Here is number 55, Briston Walker with it. The Cortez now they come into the middle. Bracken White's got a little spin around jumper that rolls off the rim. And Monticello's getting the break shooting wise right now. Cortez. Uh, shooting has kind of dropped off of it. The Buccaneers now with it back in the offensive end. Here comes a three-point try from Austin Malloy, no good, but the rebound bounces to Easton Wilson. So MHS, a nice job on the offensive boards as well. And Austin Malloy gets it right back. He's just kind of standing out on the perimeter. Now hands to Easton Nielsen, top of the key. Nielsen surveying the options. They'll come down low eventually to Matt Freestone. He mishandles. He goes out of bounds. And it'll be Cortez basketball coming back the other way with 38 seconds to go. In this first half of play, the Buccaneers leading at 42 to 25. Again, the scoreboard indicated the 33 25, but I think they're going to be changing that to start the second half as I know that the referee signaled two points. And I believe that the scoreboard put it up as a three point shot. I was going to as well. I thought it was a three point shot. Clearly indicated two, so I think they got one extra point up on the scoreboard for Henry Solo. There is Cortez in the offensive end now with just two seconds in there and a half. Black and White Scott takes a nice pass, drives the baseline, misses the shot though hard off the glass, and the Bucks with another rebound. They come back into the offensive end. Easton Nielsen thought about taking a three-point shot, but hands off left side to Sheldon Black. He took the three-point shot that was off the mark, and now they lose the basketball. Cortez coming back the other way. No good, and that's the way the half will come to a close. 32 25 is the score in favor of the Monticello Buccaneers. And it will be, I'm not sure who's going to be getting the basketball. Monticello ends up uh, going to overtime here today and losing, or if they lose by one, I unfortunately have to take the blame myself. I think I was the only person in the entire gym besides the referee who had noticed that that was a two point shot. And it, uh, it was uh, by uh, my questioning that that point was taken off. So, uh, I guess we always want to be right. We want to be honest. And, uh, so that's what we did here today. And so I'm going to say by seven after the half. And Mono, excuse me, Montezuma Cortez with the basketball to start the second half. And this is shot here. It would have been for three for Bracken White Scott. He's been taking his all game, although he has not hit as steadily as he did. He hit his first three three pointers. And since then, he has missed every one of his tries. But Cortez battling hard here, getting opportunities to score down low. Monticello finally, though, is going to come out of a melee with the basketball here after the Panthers miss an opportunity to pull to within five points in the Buccaneers. Now Dylan Maughan, a great drive through the lane, but he can't get the shot to go. It rolled off the hand a little bit. Now a little bit of a touchdown pass down court to Taylor Wilson. He can't get a shot to go. They battle for a loose ball underneath, and I believe it's going to be a foul on the Panthers here. We will on Jaron Carver, his second of the afternoon. Well, this has been a fast-paced game. These two teams rushing up and down the court. Both of these teams 
are about speed. Of course, Monticello maybe even more so than they have been in the past. Again, we'll mention they don't have the strong bodies underneath the basket that they have had for the last few years. And uh, so the Buckaroos having to go to more of a speed game, a little bit different look for the Buckaroos. Moving the basketball around a lot as well. Austin Alou is going to have it stripped away from him as he drove the baseline. And again, they'll block a shot from Austin Malloy. As both teams now unable to score here in the first minute and a half of this second half. And Cortez has the basketball back in their offensive end. It remains 32-25 in favor of the Buckaroos here. And we're almost two minutes in to this third quarter. Now a long shot is off the back of the rim and high into the air. It's going to be retrieved by Bracken White Stump for Cortez. And so the Panthers will keep the ball in the offensive end here. We are now exactly two minutes in to the second half. And neither team yet to score, or neither team has scored to this point. Oh boy, there's a great drive right through traffic. That's off the mark there on the shot from Cortez. That was Jared Carter who got some good penetration through the Buckaroo defense and on the rebound. On a putback attempt, Randy Haley is going to be fouled. And this will be the second of the afternoon on Dylan Mon. So a couple shots coming for Randy Haley now from the line. Clock has stopped at 5.48 to go in this third quarter of play. Haley misses the first of the two free throws. And so the second one forthcoming from Haley, and the Panthers have not made, now they have finally made their first free throw of the afternoon. Haley now uh, one of five on the afternoon. As here's Dylan Bond losing the basketball on the baseline. It saves out of bounds, actually was knocked out of bounds by Cortez, so MHS will retain possession here in the offensive end. Here is Austin Malloy to get the basketball into Sheldon Black, and he's going to be fouled from behind during the shot by Taylor Wilson. That'll be Wilson's first foul of the afternoon. And put Sheldon Black to the line. I believe this is Black's first trip to the line. shot coming from Black is off the mark. So a tough break for the Buckaroos here as they, to this point, have been shooting pretty well from the line. They were four of six through the first half of play, make it four of seven now. And Black's second shot on the way, he makes up for it as that one goes right through. And the so 33 to 26 now. The Buckaroos do finally get to that 33 point mark where the scoreboard indicated it after the first half, and now it's back to a seven-point lead as the two teams have only traded free throw baskets here in the second half, and now Cortez throws the ball away. It comes out of bounds over here on the near side, right in front of the Panthers players' bench, and the Buckaroos will get it back. Dylan Mon walking it across the timeline. Hands over right side to Easton Nielsen out of Everett Hatch, top of the key. Dylan Mon is wide open on the left side for three. Six twenty-six now, their biggest lead of the ball game at 10 points. With that impressive three-pointer on a wide open look from Dylan Mon. Now Cortez with it back, trying to answer for three. No good. And the Bucks will come away, so now maybe a little desperation for Cortez, although this ball is going to go out of bounds off of, I believe, the Buckaroos. Maybe it got kicked as it went through traffic. It looks like they are staying down here on the Buckaroo offensive end. So apparently MHS have that ball deflected away and out of bounds as they were trying to pass it through traffic. So a break for Monticello. And again, Cortez uh, maybe sensing now that this is the biggest lead of the game, taking some chances and shooting from long range. Here are the Buckaroos missing from long range. Speaking of, Sheldon Black could not get the three-pointer to go, but he gets back nicely on defense. However, right over the top of it, Taylor Wilson is able to bank one off the glass. And it becomes 36 to 28 now. Cortez is back to within eight points in this one. And they just trying to take away the four corners classic from the host team here this afternoon. Both of these teams were the winning teams from last night. It's also a battle of the orange and black here today. As both of these teams have the same school colors. As most of you, I'm sure, are aware. On a solo course in their road black unis here today with the orange highlighting and Cortez is in white with black and orange highlighted, and now they're going to get a travel called on Randy Haley as he walks right through the middle 
of the lane with the basketball, trying to get through the referee defense. And Monticello will get the basketball back with four minutes to go in this third quarter of play. MHS on top, 36 to 28. They've led for the majority of this one. There was a time where Cortez has actually taken the lead a couple times in this one, but it has been very soon, and it has been for a very short amount of time. And MHS. It's a nice shot coming for Tina here for Dylan Mullen from just inside the arc as Mullen has made five back-to-back -back points here. And it's a 10-point lead once again, 38-28 for MHS with 335 to go in the third quarter. Now a long shot from Bracken White. Skunk is no good. That would have been for three. Monticello with the defensive board. Dylan Mullen has the at 12 points, nice little run by there by Dylan Mon right there for the Buckaroos and a timeout called by Coach DeBoer of the Cortez Panthers here with 3.25 to go in the third quarter. And again, Monticello on top by 12 as we speak. A broadcast this afternoon from the Four Corners Classic in Cortez brought to you in part by San Juan Health Services, providing emergency and continued care to San Juan County for almost 55 years at the San Juan Hospital and Clinic and Landing Spanish Valley and Dove Creek Clinics, the San Juan Hospital offers care not only to the patient but also to their family. Also today, Countywide Realty, with five local agents, they've been meeting all of San Juan County's real estate needs for almost 20 years. Blue Mountain Foods, Monticello's hometown grocer, featuring fresh produce, meats, deli, and bakery items daily with specials every week. The San Juan Pharmacy, meeting all of Monticello and Blanding's pharmaceutical and gift needs. And Sandstone Tires, handling all of Monticello's tire needs. A block east of the stoplight on Center Street, they also perform alignments, oil changes, and they're an official U-Haul dealer. You reach the shop at 459 so again, Buckaroos with the 12 point lead here as we get set to go back to action. Marcelo uh, on defense here as Cortez inbounds the ball and they will come across the timeline. Black and White's going to take his time here. Just looking at McCabe Malloy on defense. Here for the first time in this game, Tyler Bird in. Here is Cortez attempting to score, can't do it on the rebound. A foul coming in, and I believe Everett Hack will be called for this first of the afternoon. And it looks like it'll put number 23, Connor McGee, to the line here. Everett Hatch guilty. His first foul. And the first shot from the B is no good. So Connor McGee continues a trend for Cortez, a bad foul shooting here today. They're now just one of six. And make it one of seven as he missed both of those, but the ball goes out of bounds off the money center, unfortunately. So Cortez will keep it here in the offensive end. They'll inbound from the offensive base. Two fifty-eight to go in the third quarter. Monticello leads 40-28. Nice little touch pass to Bracken Whitescope, but boy, Cortez's shooting has just really dropped off drastically. So it's probably about midway through that second quarter. They're getting looks underneath the basket, but they're just not able to make things happen. And I guess you got to give the Buckaroo defense credit as well. Monticello is like flies on dead meat to the ball here today, and they really have played strong defense. Both of these these first two games of the season, I think that's going to be uh, one of the things we refer to all year long this year. And as right now, the Buckaroos looking very solid defensively to start out the year. Bracken White Scott, meanwhile, going to be guilty of his third foul of the afternoon on Austin Malloy here. And Malloy will go to the line to shoot two. As he was in the act of a putback. Gets a nice the roll right here as Malloy makes the first of his two. Is actually four of five now from the free throw line. So shooting 80% is the Buckaroo senior. Malloy's second shot on the way, another friendly roll. He's got 17 points on the afternoon now, leading all scores. Monticello on top by the biggest margin of the day at 14 points, 42 to 28. Now Cortez with it back in the offensive end. 
220. I'm only in the third quarter of play now. Cortez almost mishandles. That was Briston Walker. Almost losing the basketball with a shot made from long range from Connor McGee. No good as Monticello got the rebound. They tried to transition, but it was stolen back. And it's going to be McGee in to score on a little lay in there as he went through the bucket of defense. And now Monticello, I guess, coming back the other way, throws the basketball away. So a turnover back to Cortez. And now the Panthers within 12 again. And really, no lead is safe here. A lot of time left in this ballgame. Two minutes still remaining in the third. So the Buccaneers have to be careful. They can't allow Cortez to get some momentum here on home court. There's a long shot from Brock and White's back, and he just has, like the rest of the team, fallen off their three point range since he made three straight to start the game. And now, on a second try here on the rebound, though, whistle Cortez for a foul, and this will be on Connor McGee. And again, he's mouthing off to the ref, and he's good. Hey, be careful about that. There's already been a technical call today. We mentioned that earlier. Meantime, here's Tyler Bird into the offensive end for Monticello with it. After the foul, Buckley's with possession. McCabe Malloy now, top of the key, looks to Tyler Bird, right side. Down low in the right corner. And the Everett Hatch back out high, and Austin Malloy's just going to pull it out. My goodness, a long range three right there for Austin Malloy. He leads all scores with 20 points now. And Malloy. A strong afternoon here today. He's hit, that's his first three-pointer of the day, actually. And it's uh, Cortez back with him in the offensive end, but they missed the ball the pass off the hand of Brack and White stepping out of bounds. And Cortez kind of fading away here a little bit here in this third quarter. We've got a minute six to go still in the third. <laughs> it looks like we're going to get a Monticello timeout apparently here with, no, excuse me, Cortez timeout with 106 remaining. And the Bucks on top by their biggest margin of the day to this point, 45 to 30. And the broadcast this afternoon is brought to you in part by the Empire Electric Association, a member of the Touchstone Energy Cooperative, and a leader in advocating energy conservation in the Four Corners area. Since 1939, also today, Blue Mountain Meats, and all the Monticello's food service, <laughs> custom processing needs for 59 years of purchases. Also to San Juan Records, San Juan County's hometown newspaper since 1915 and online at sjlnews.com. And again, a huge thank you to all these underwriters for your support. It's not possible to do these broadcasts. So I want to say a big thank you to all of you. And if your business is interested in supporting the broadcast of Buckaroo Sports, give us a call during regular business hours at 587-3456. It's a pretty simple thing to do, a great way to show your support for Buckaroo Sports on the radio airwaves, which everyone in town can hear, especially when we're out on the road here like the other day. Monticello missing a shot off the inbound pass, and Cortez quickly back the other way. We're going to get an offensive charge here as Anna set up nicely on the defense, and now another whistle and maybe another technical foul coming here. And this would foul Brack and White Skunk out, I believe. He's going to be called for a charge. Second, on White 33 seconds. Yeah, he's going to foul out right now. So the leading scorer for Cortez is about to foul out with a technical, and that's what I've been saying uh, for these last few moments here, or since about the second quarter. As now that's going to be it for Bracken Whiteskunk, and he is the biggest uh, scorer for Cortez to this point. So that's a blow for the Panthers as Austin Malloy makes the first of the two technical foul shots. And so really, uh, kids, I guess you can uh, take a lesson if, even if you disagree with a call that a referee makes against you if you're involved in sports. You just keep your mouth shut and you take it. But here, unfortunately, because White Skunk does not do that, it's going to end his day. Plus, it also gives the Buckaroos a couple points here as Austin Malloy makes good on both of his free throws. So. so now the Buckaroos find themselves with the basketball in the offensive end, I should say. It's Austin Malloy after they an inbounded it following the technical foul. And now another foul coming to Cortez here. This will be the third, I believe, on Jonathan Walk. No, the fourth. I must have missed a foul on Walk. So all of a sudden, we've got uh, another player in foul trouble for Cortez. And uh, Monticello will shoot a one and one here, but Austin Malloy misses. So he's 
been shooting well from the line today, but right there it does not pay off. He does lead all scores today with 22 points, though. Obviously the player of the game, but in fact, uh, Monticello is doing exactly what Coach Espen said in the pregame interview that they needed to, and that's play as a unit, play as a team here today, and they've definitely been doing a good job of that. Here comes a foul to Tanner Early, though, his second of the afternoon as he sticks the leg out and trips a Cortez Panther heading to the basket. That was Randy Haley. So in the act of shooting, it looks like he's going to shoot two right here. So Haley to the line, his first shot on the way off the mark. And that is not surprising going by the way Cortez has been performing all game long. They have not shot well from the line at all. In fact, uh, I believe they're now one for eight. Haley, another shot coming on that one. Off the mark as well. Buckaroo is fighting for it underneath, and we're going to get a jump ball as both Austin Malloy and Randy Haley were grappling for that. And it will be Buckaroo basketball on alternating possession. 11 seconds remaining in the third quarter of play, and it's a 17 point lead for Monticello, 47 to 30, in what is technically the championship game of this four years classic here in Cortez this year. Only four teams involved. These were the two winners of last night facing off against each other today as Monticello travels with the basketball that time. Dylan Mon giving up possession to the Panthers. And now with just three seconds to go in the third quarter, Cortez will have one final shot to get this down court and maybe get a shot. The ball bounces free though. Austin Malloy spins around and almost gets a jumper from way back in his other end. My goodness, he was five feet inside his side of midcourt. And he spun around and got a good shot away and that one winged off the back of the rim and nearly went in. That would have been a beauty at the buzzer. But instead, the third quarter ends 47 to 30 in favor of Monticello. And now, really barring any kind of a major collapse, Hill Services doing a great job in Monticello for 55 years. Also this afternoon, Countywide Realty with five local agents. They've been meeting all of San Juan County's real estate needs since 1994. And again, that is also going to be 20 years this year. So we've got a lot of anniversaries coming up for some businesses in town that have been faithfully supporting Buckaroo Sports here on KBJ as long as I can remember. I've been doing these broadcasts for about 10 years now, starting first with football and then we started adding some uh, girls and boys basketball in and the years following that. And so we've been doing a lot of broadcasts for Buckaroo Sports and over these years we have had several very faithful businesses supporting these broadcasts. And without you folks, we are not able to do them, so again, we say thank you. And as Dylan Mon commits his third foul of the game here, right underway here in the fourth quarter. Now Cortez missing a shot, and it's going to be James Brewer coming down at the rebound. He'll hand off to Black. He hands off to Austin So Austin Malloy really is going away with the scoring lead. He's almost got half of the Buccaroos points. He's got 24 of their 49, and he's going to try to make it 25 or 50 right here, and that would indeed be half of the score. So, uh, boy, uh, excuse me, Austin Malloy about to try to amass half of the Buccaroos offense so far here today if he can make this free throw. The foul, by the way, was the first of the day on Austin Bales. And here comes Malloy's foul shot, and he indeed does make it half of the Buccaroos points as he's now got 25 of the Monticello's 50 here on the afternoon, and that makes it 50 to 30. It's a 20-point lead for NHS, 22 remaining now in the ballgame. So Cortez in a bit of trouble here, and time becoming a factor. It's Monticello has pretty much dominated this one uh, down the stretch. They really have shown a lot of longevity, and they really show a lot of steadiness. As well. And someone tried to work it in the middle. James Brewer mishandles on a pass from Austin Beloy, but Beloy's able to steal that ball right back, though, as Taylor Wilson was trying to transition for Cortez. Now Matt Flintstone gets the basketball. Can't get a shot away as it's going to be blocked off his hand from Jaron Carver and out of bounds. So Monticello will actually keep it here in the offensive end. Inbound from the offensive sideline. It's Easton Nielsen getting it in for Dylan Mon, who spins away from his defensive man. Austin Bales gets a shot away, but it's off the mark. Cortez back the other way after the rebound, and now a shot rims out from number 12, Randy Haley. And you know, Cortez has not scored at some time. Their scoring has been far and few. 
Patrick Center has a great over under shot there for Sheldon Black, a little double pump effort. And it's now 52 to 30 as Monticello continues to go away here. 22 point lead. Now off the ball, it looks like we're going to get a Monticello foul, and I think this is going to be against Mike Fleece, indeed it is. That'll be his first of the day. And this comes with 6.25 remaining in the ballgame now. MHS leading 52 to 30. So unless Cortez can come up with something amazing and come up with something amazing quickly, there's going to be a half a year here today. And that takes the, uh, what would technically be the four corners of Austin Tyler. Cortez does score one here. Kristen Walker with the bucket for the Panthers, and it's 52 to 32. So once again, Cortez back to within 20 points, but just 6.05 remaining in the ball game here. NHS throws one away though, Matt Nielsen tried to pass it down in the traffic, but how about this? He backpedals into the defensive end and steals it away from the Panthers who had a three on one coming down court. Monticello now back in the offensive end, a nice quick shot from Matt Nielsen, and he goes to the bucket and scores. So how about that? Now Matt Nielsen redeems himself there after throwing the ball away, he gets it right back and ends up getting the ball down underneath the basket and a nice little big shot that got his defensive man into the air and then uh, he was able to score. Now coming back the other way, it looks like the Buckaroos are going to be guilty of a foul here. That's going to be Jens Brewer. That's his third foul of the afternoon. Solo now with six fouls as a team. Of course, uh, here in the second half, I should clarify, Cortez has nine. So, Monticello, of course, is shooting from here on out. It'll be a two-shot situation no matter what foul occurs from here on out for Cortez as well. And, in fact, it comes into play right now. Well, no, it doesn't because this is an offensive foul. So, Jared Carver guilty of the offensive foul. That gives the ball back over to Monticello, though, and that is the third foul on Carver here today. Now on the other end, in Monticello's offensive end, it looks like we're going to get a foul off the ball, and I think this is going to be on Tyler Bird. So back-to-back -back fouls here. It is indeed on Bird. It is his first of the day. And with 5.21 to go in the ball game, and Monticello's lead at 22, 54 to 32. Taylor Wilson with the basketball for Cortez, top of the key. Now over the left side to Austin Bale. Top of the key again, they go now to the right side. It's going to be Wilson. He drives the baseline. Had a shot from right underneath the bucket. Stuck though by Matt Freestone. And Monticello back the other way into the offensive end. Unfortunately, a pass that took Freestone by surprise caused him to walk with the basketball. And that'll turn it back over to the Panthers. So Cortez set to inbound the ball from right in front of the Buckaroo players bench here with 4.58 to go in the ball game, and Monticello leading by 22. We're glad you've joined us. It is the Four Corners Classic from Cortez, Colorado. Monticello and Cortez, the two teams that were winners last night. Looks like Monticello is going to follow up with their second win of the season here today. Cortez had scored, but Easton Nielsen answers right back with a big three-pointer. And again, uh, you heard me kind of quipping about the uh, uh, what the uh, coaching staff has been kind of joking around with me before the ball game. But Monticello will need to average what they did last night, seven three-pointers a ball game, and they're working on it here now. We are going to get a foul. This will be the second of the day on Matt Freestone. We'll take a look here, actually. Monticello has hit five three-pointers so far through the day. So, again, they are working on that mark of seven each game. And they'll get two more in the next four minutes and a half. They will indeed equal their mark. It looks like there's going to be a one-and-one one here for Randy Haley, but he misses on the first on the rebound. We're going to get a foul, apparently. And this will put Monticello to the line, as this is going to be... On Cortez is number 23, Connor McGee. This will be his second of the day. And again, as we mentioned, that is the 10th foul as a team. Excuse me, that's the 11th foul as a team here in the second half for Cortez. And that is a two-shot opportunity here for Jens Brewer. And his first shot is off the back of the rim, no good. We'll have one more opportunity, though. Try to get himself on the board. Jens Brewer looking for his first 
point of the afternoon against this Cortez squad, and he gets it right here. Nothing but the bottom of the net. That also makes it a 24-point lead for the Buckaroos, 58 to 34. We're going to get a timeout here called by Monticello with 425 remaining in the ball game, and the Buckaroos with a sizable 58 to 34 lead. Our broadcast here this afternoon from the Four Corners Classic and Cortez, brought to you in part by Blue Mountain Foods, Monticello's hometown grocer, featuring fresh produce, meats, and bakery items daily with specials every week. Also today, the San Juan Pharmacy, meeting all the Monticello and Landings pharmaceutical and gift needs. Sandstone Tires, handling all of Monticello's tire needs. They walk east of the stoplight on Center Street. They also perform alignments, oil changes, and they're an official U-Haul dealer. You can reach the shop at 459-0038. So this afternoon, the Empire Electric Association, member of the Touchdown Energy Cooperative, and a leader in advocating energy conservation in the Four Corners area for almost 75 years. Again, that is another business that is experiencing an anniversary this year, and it will be 75 years of service for the Empire Electric Association this year, 2014. So congratulations to all these businesses that have been going steady for so many years in the local area. Here is Cortez coming across the timeline. After the timeout, and a foul coming here, I think, to Bird of Monticello. <laughs> That's nine for Monticello now as a team here in the second half. So from here on out, both teams shooting two shots regardless of uh, unless it's an offensive foul. As Taylor Wilson hits the first that is what actually was a one-on-one -on -one situation, but now becomes a two-shot situation. So Wilson going to have one more shot coming here. And that one rolls off, so the Buckaroos get a break there. It's really sort of moot at this point. We're halfway through the final period of play. The Buckaroos leading by 23, 58 to 35. And the great pass, a great shot. It goes off the glass and in, and he registers a foul as well. So Malloy a chance to complete a three-point play here. He'll go to the line, and let's see who the foul is going to be called on. It'll be the third of the afternoon against number 23, Connor McGee. So Monticello to the line here, McCade Malloy. Not able to complete the three-point play as it bounces off the back of the rim in the front of the rim. Cortez gets the loose ball. 60 to 35 though, as McCade Malloy gets himself on the board with that field goal. And now Cortez apparently just throws the ball out of bounds here. Buckaroos will get it back and they will inbound it. Tyler Bird to Jens Brewer and Tyler Morello is in the ball game now for NHS as well, along with the 13, I believe it is, Brian Tanner back in for NHS. He was already in at some point today. Getting some more action here in the final three and a half minutes of this contest. Buckaroos are using the bench now with the comfortable lead that they have here at 60 to 35, a 25 point lead. McKay Malloy trying to quarterback a play. And a little moving play to the right of Tyler Bird. A nice pull-up jumper right there. And he's going to get himself on the board with a field goal. Monticello leads by 27, 62-35. There is Taylor Wilson back in the offensive end for Cortez. He'll hand over left side at number 23, Connor McGee. Now they'll go off the glass and in as McGee was able to get to the basket and score there. That makes it 62-37. We're into the final three minutes of this ball game here today. The championship game of the Four Corners Classic. It looks like Monticello is going to boys. take what would be an unofficial title, I guess. This is a yeah. round robin type thing, and it was an official tournament this year. No bracket or anything. Yeah, Just four teams involved, and between the four teams, this will be the team at the end of the weekend that is 2-0. Whether Cortez will end up 1-1, Bayfield will end up 1-1, and Shiprock will be the team that falls to 0-2 here at this year's event here in Cortez. Looks like Brian Tanner is going to be called for his first foul of the game. And now MHS putting even some younger faces out on the court. As we get some uh, guys in who uh, 
aren't normally going to be called during varsity ball games. Joe Felmuth in right now, along with number 35, Andrew Torres. Of course, all these guys were playing last night. Nolan Freestone is in the ball game for MHS, along with Eli Johnson. Let's see who the guy is over on the far side. I think that's number 15 right there. I already mentioned Joe Kellogg. Nope, we've got Tobin Espin is in right now. Ramona Solo as well. So all underclassmen. I think everybody has now officially seen action here in both of the ball games over the course of these last two days. And so you've had 17 players get a chance to have some varsity action here at the Four Corners Classic in Cortez this weekend. That's something that doesn't normally happen. Coach Espen was pretty happy about that. And it's their first foul of the day, by the way, on number 24 for Monticello, Tobin Espen. And Taylor Wilson makes the first of his two free throws. He makes both of those free throws. And Wilson now, Eden Cortez with 13 points on the day. Panthers back to within 62. And Monticello is Torres is Wrapped up over on the far side, he's going to be he's going to draw a foul here, so Torres is going to go to the line to shoot two. That foul is going to be on Jared Carver, apparently. Nope, they're going to give that apparently to number three, Taylor Wilson, his second of the day. Regardless, it is number 35, Andrew Torres, to the line for MHS, and guess what? He's on the board now as he makes the first of his two free throws. So that makes it 63 39. 203 is what shows on the clock. He misses the second, does Andrew Torres. <laughs> and on the rebound, it goes out of bounds. It looks like off of Cortez. So the Buckaroos are going to get it right back here with just over two minutes to go in the game. Now they're working around the perimeter. Torres, nice quick passing out of the corner. A three point shot is no good from Eli Johnson. Cortez will come back right away on the defensive board, and it's going to be a foul against Monticello here. As Jaron Carver was working it into the offensive end for Cortez, and this will be the first of the afternoon on Andrew Torres. And both teams now with two shots no matter what, so two shots coming from Jaron Carver, and he hits the first of his two. Shot coming for Carver, and that one rolls off. The rebound bounces out to Tobin Esplin. And Cortez is back to within 23, although Monticello now throws the ball away. And here comes a nice run. Shot off the glass and in from Jerry Carver. So just like that, Cortez back to within 21 points now. But time really a factor as we're down to 90 seconds to go. But now these two players crash together and come down hard on the court as. Andrew Torres and Jaron Carver hit the court. They were running down into the offensive end for Cortez, and I think it's going to be a foul on Torres here. Cortez with the basketball. Indeed, it will be Torres' second foul. And once again, Jaron Carver goes to the line for the Panthers with 126 remaining in the ballgame here, and Carver makes the first of the two. One shot coming for Carver now. 63-43 to 43 as Cortez is pulled back within 20. Our broadcast today brought to you in part by Blue Mountain Meats. Yes, here in all of Minnesota's food service and custom processing needs since 1954. And featuring bulk food purchases. All these businesses proud to support Buffalo Sports. Here comes a shot from Monticello off the glass off the rim and no good. And that was from Joe Meanwhile, by the way, Carver made the second of his two free throws, so he made both of those. And it is 63 to 44 for Monticello. Cortez missing now. And the Buckaroos coming back across the timeline. We're into the final minute of this ball game here today. The fourth quarter's classic. There's a nice little reverse lane try. No good from Nolan Greenstone. And the Buckaroos now back on defense. And here comes a, are they going to call a block on Freestone? It looks like they're going to, as apparently he wasn't fully set in the defensive position. So the first foul of the day coming to Nolan Freestone. That was crap. <laughs> Two shots for Connor McGee for Cortez. A broadcast from the Four Corners Classic today, brought to you in part by the San Juan Record, San Juan County's hometown newspaper. 
for almost a century and online at sjrnews.com. And Blue Mountain Chiropractic, providing chiropractic care to both Mount Sutherland Landing along with sports injury and allergy treatments. It looks like uh, Connor McGee missed both of those free throws right there. The score remains for the time being 62 Four times, and right now Monticello just missed a shot. Four times coming back the other way, and Jonathan Roth is able to score here for the Panthers, and it's 63 to 46 now. Monticello, of course, with all the underclassmen in the ball game right now. That's why you're seeing the uh, game finish off as it is. We are moving into the final 10 seconds, and that's the first point for an underclassman, and that's probably going to be the last point of the day. But as Utah Johnson scores, there is one. Try to beat the budget from Cortez, no good. And that will do it. Time expires. On the Cortez Panthers, and Monticello are your four quarters classic champions here.